ان الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه وتعالى ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله سبحانه وتعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير ليس لنا رب سواه ولا نعبد الا اياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون ونشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وكشف الغمه وتركها على المحجه البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها الا هالك فصلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين يقول المولى عز وجل في كتابه العظيم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد ما يدي براذرز ان اسلام ماي سيسترز ان اسلام ان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور من يفعلها وهو يعلم انها تضره يوم القيامه وخيرها من يعلم انها تنفعه يوم القيامه بامر الله عز وجل اما بعد ماي دي براذرز اند سيسترز ان اسلام وي هيرد اباوت ذا ديث every second in our life an imam who was given the khutbah in the middle of the khutbah he passed away an imam leader the prayers in the middle of the ayat when he reciting the quran he passed away that's happened last week a sister she was talking to her kids and she was have fun and laugh with them she drop and she passed away we hear that every single day. You hear the brother today, they have several janazah today morning. So the death is really surrounding us, and we are afraid from the death. Why? Last week, we see the masajid in the Jum'ah starting empty, as we see it today. People start really afraid from this moment. Now, as a believer, as a Muslims, why we are afraid? This is a question we should ask ourselves. We really afraid from the death and why? Ummul Mu'minin Aisha she was afraid from the death. She was she was scared from that this moment. But Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he's reminding us increase dhikr hadim al lazat. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, what's Hadim al that? He said, that's the death. Just remember the death all the time. But why we are afraid? We shouldn't be afraid. Because this is, you're limited in the dunya. Allah wrote it for you. He gave you the risk and the time of death. So you don't need to be afraid. But you have to do your rules. In this situation, when you see the disease and the corona and all this vaccination, all things around, just you do your protection, you follow up and leave the time to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because so many people say, I wish I'm dying today, what in tomorrow, I feel I'm gonna die. You don't feel that you're gonna die, you don't think about death, you don't think you're gonna live forever, you go, you don't you don't wish it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't like that. He gives you limited time that the death is one, but how in different scenario? A leader, engineering, doctor, construction man, mechanic man, we all gonna die. This is nothing cool. Who is gonna die? There's no priority, it's a timing. From when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let the baby come to the dunya, he was crying. But when we die, we don't know what situation, but the people cry around us while the baby, when he born, the family is happy and the baby is crying. See, how is it? But think about this time in the dunya, when you see the weather is too cold, and we all say it's too cold. Think about the people under the ground. 
It's rahma from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let this body be eating. It's only bone left for 25 years and will disappear again. This is rahma from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But think about it. We are going to come back again, but we're going to meet the one he who created us and he loved us. So you don't need to be scared from the death because you need to meet the one who say, you are my servant, I love you, and you have to love the one who loves you. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, you need to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he loves you, you love him too. But in the dunya, we are worried too much about our houses, our income, our kids. Yes, you need to worry. But think about it. In the akhirah, who's going to benefit you? فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَةٍ شَرًا يَرَى Who is making a good deeds, he will see it. Who make the bad deeds, he will see it. So in the dunya now, I'm worried about my son, how he's doing the school, why he's not success, why my daughter does so and so, why my wife so and so. Worry, worry, worry too much. When you worry too much, you get sad. And that's reflecting your family action and you're not going to deal with the family the right way. Now think about this is a part of it. Now if you think about you're going to die. And say this is, I see the death around me is my turn is coming. And the, you, you get sad and scared inside your heart. If you're scared from the death, do you think you are active? Positively with your kids and your wife at home or the wife she will act positive with you know each other's because you your brain is fixed through some way now I'm gonna die what should I do Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is great Allah is very close to you if you are make tawbah now to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, He will forgive you. Then He will love you subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He's telling us, Man yuhibbu luqa Allah, Allah yuhibbu luqa. If you like to meet Allah, He will love to meet you. But how I meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If I'm not doing my duty toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how I keep my tongue by dhikrillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how is my salah, how is my zakah, how is I'm doing with my family, my neighbor, how I'm, my tongue talk nice all the time. I have to ask myself this question to make tawbah ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I ask for forgiveness from him subhanahu wa ta'ala, my last time in this dunya, my last moment in this dunya is la ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us, man kanat akhir kalimatuhu fi hadhi dunya la ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah dakhla al-jannah. If the last word in your life La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah will be in the Jannah. This is the word of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So worry about the dunya much, yes. But I need to worry about the akhirah. I don't need to be afraid from the death. Because this is a time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give it to us. No one remember and knows what is coming tomorrow and when you're gonna die and where you're gonna die. So the death is around us, but I don't like to be scared if I have make to make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we call it tawbatun nasuha, forever, that's it, I'm not going to do any sins anymore. I have to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because I, for, for me now, what I'm doing in the dunya, I'm working, I'm eating, I'm, I'm earning money, taking care of my family, but where is my duty toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do I have my qiyam al -lay? Do I have my salah and time? Do I give my zakat? Today, everybody think about the tax starting. I need to bring some money back. But do you think about your zakat? You know how many days left for Ramadan? Few. Count it. How many days? We are very close. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be together in the month of Ramadan. We need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let this gathering in Ramadan to hear the Quran again, to give us the power again, the power of the Quran, 
because we ignore the Quran, we think about the death. Even the salah is becoming very hard for us. Even the salah, even the wudu, we're getting lazy. People get immunized to hear somebody die now, it's normal. But you don't think about yourself. You're going to be there one day. If you are afraid from the death, when you see the people around you today and tomorrow and before, we carry bodies, we carry brothers who we love. We carry them to the, to the yard and we bury them. But still it's not alerting us. We still think about the dunya. Many brothers today, when you can sit down and talk to them and say, I went to Connecticut, the house is cheap over there, I want to buy houses. What about your house in the Jannah? What about your house in the Jannah? Did you think about it? But if you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will let you last time in the dunya beautiful and wonderful. Even He will remind, if you get closer to Him, He will remind you, give you some actions. It's time getting closer for you because He loved to meet you for to rise clean from, the, from all the sins. Look at Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu wa arda. Because he's afraid from the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from the death. Because the companions, they understand the Jannah is there. Do you want to go to the Jannah? They don't care about the hellfire, it's not for them. But they're still afraid from the iqab and the hisab from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He got in his dreams because he's linking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a rooster knocked him three times. And he said, Ya Amir al Mu'min, what is it? What is it? He said the death is coming. It's alert from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he's Omar. He knows who's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, he's doing his duty toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Three days pass. And the Majusi in the Fajr time, he stabbed him three times. It's alert from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to sleep before we go to sleep with smiling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask him if this is like my last time, Ya Allah, accept it for me while I'm clean from the sins. If I still have something, Ya Allah, let me stay more longer, but not like the kafir. That's some of them they went to and you read to the arz al umr is more a thousand years. It's not gonna happen. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave everyone time. So we, when we think about Umar radiallahu anhu arda, when he gets these dreams and he's not afraid, and when you see the Sahaba, some of them get stabbed too when they stop him. And the Majusi, when he saw he's getting closer to the death, he killed himself. And Umar, what did he say radiallahu anhu arda? Alhamdulillah, the one who did that is not from my people. From Muslim, he's not a Muslim like me, alhamdulillah. But think about it, he, was, he is linked with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All his brain only for the salah and the ibadah, even in his time of death, as salah, as salah, as salah. And this is the word of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we need to correct ourselves not to be scared. Yes, we see so many cases. But I have to focus about myself and my family and my friends. If I'm correct, then I have to speak to them too. Correct yourself. Oh, son, be careful so and so. Getting closer to them. Speak to them. Tell them what you have to do. Brothers and sisters who are in very difficult time. Time which we all ignore the time of death. Because people now, they think about it's normal. Yes, we see it's decreased. But still we hear it every single day. Back home, over here, over there, you open your phone, just right away, somebody passed away, inna lillahi wa inna rajiun. you said it how many times a day? Is the time getting closer to me and you? So before it ends, I need to correct myself. I need to understand my duty toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the time I awake in the morning until I go to my bed. Daily homework. Daily homework. If started by my salah, ended by my salah. 
the, the, the ulama, they said, if you need to correct yourself from now, get one verse of the Quran, one part of the Quran, read it correctly, understanding, translation now, it's available every, by all the language, understanding, and look at yourself, where you add from this ayah. That's what Omar radiallahu anhu arda, when he said, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, you're not going to memorize the whole thing. He said, Let me work, but what I memorized, I do my action toward this ayah. When I see I'm doing myself correctly, I move with the next ayah. So one ayah a day. Don't say it's too hard for you to memorize it, it's very easy. Most of us come from different countries and we speak the language. So it's easy to understand the Quran too. And the Ajami struggle, you take the double reward than the person who speaks the language. Remember that. You're taking double of the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From now on, before the months of Ramadan, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still give us time, one ayah a day, understand it and work with this ayah. See your action. Where are you from that? We need to extend our hand to each other, helping each other. I don't need your money, and you don't need my money. But we need to know each other. We need to help each other. Before the month of Ramadan, think about it. If Allah give you time, promise Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will do something good from now on until the month of Ramadan. This is counts, a good thing. That's getting closer to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes. From now on, daily, I'm going to put five dollars in a small box. Tell my family member, if I'm die before the month of Ramadan, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take me early, this is donation for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, go to the poor and need or to the masjid. No, I am wealthy. I can put hundred dollars every week. Two hundred dollars. One month. Whatever you can. And give it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the poor and need. Say, this is my duty to Allah. You know, if you're doing something like that daily, Wallahi, your heart will be soft and you're going to see yourself change completely. How come I put something in the side for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa and not talk about only money, anything else. Even you give some water for someone, even you do something inside your house, even you clean the dishes inside your house, even you cook in your house, this is all good deeds. But do it continuously. You're going to see your heart completely change. You're going to see yourself a different person. A person come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you come from your work and very tired. And right away you take a shower and you jump inside the kitchen. You cook and but smile. Not punished. It's by your heart. Voluntarily. I'm going to cook for my family and I feed all of them. And you see all of them. They are smiling in front of your face. You know what? Second day, third day, is going to be a habit. Yourself, you're going to find something really different. Your characters will change completely. You're going to see you are a good person, comfortable, happy, understand the meaning of the family, and you're going to see your family reflect in a different way. Yes, we can do the same thing like my father did or my mother did. You're going to see a beautiful thing in the side of the house, and this is how you start. Not only the money, the action, the work, your neighbor, and very old neighbor, they don't know what to do, they are very sick. Sometime, once a week, and just order some stuff, some people are afraid, deliver it to this house. There's no matter Muslim or non Muslims. That's how we correct ourselves. You're going to see yourself now coming from work tired. You help your family. You offer some salah. You're reciting some Quran. Are you going to tell me when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will you be upset? You think you're going to be scared from the death? Wallahi, you will never think about it for a second. Because your duty toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. I did my duty toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I did my salah. I did my duty toward my family, my neighbor. I pay my part of the zakah. I did everything good. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish me? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love his ibad. Allah never punished. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always forgive. If you got closer to him, he will forgive your sins. 
understand this is the time to correct yourself as I need to correct myself too. If I'm doing something and I think it's bad, I need to stop it. I need to stop screaming. I need to stop talk bad to the people. Always say they don't know, they don't mean it. You know, brother, he says, oh, no, he don't mean it. Correct yourself. You're going to see everyone getting closer to you and they love you so much because your tongue, it changed for a beautiful brother. You call him, brother, make dua for me, inshallah. I will make dua for you too. And when you come to the masjid, and so many of us, they say people raise their hand, they make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make a mean to him. Say, oh Allah, give him what he's asking for if it's good for him. Not a brother who say, oh Allah, take my life, and you say, ameen. You have to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if this is good for him, oh Allah, give it to him. Make dua to the people who are sick today, because we don't know if I am off tomorrow in, in, the, in the hospital, I'm sick, I'm in the bed, I need everyone to make dua for me. So when you make dua, as the Prophet sallallahu make dua for the whole ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you make dua for the one who passed away, you make for the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, we need to correct ourselves before we say it's too late. Today, the media, it's very easy to reach everyone. A small thing, you're doing good, it will reach everywhere. I see so many messages, very active, very helpful. Put your hand with them. I'm telling you, you get like a few days, I'd say like 90, 80, 70 days before Ramadan, it's still is time for you. Something from now, put it in the side, say this is, I help my masjid in the month of Ramadan. I need the masjid to be the perfect place for me in the month of Ramadan. If I am not alive, I need the people over there enjoy. But what I did, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala counted for me until the day of judgment. As a sadaqatun jariya. Name it as a sadaqatun jariya. Running until the day of judgment. I repeat it again when I meet one brother from Africa. And he was telling me, brother... I need to go to the Hajj and I cannot afford it. And I told him, brother, are you pretty Jum'ah? He said, of course. I say every time put like $20 in the box and leave it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, after years, I meet him when he called me. I, of course, we're getting old and we don't recognize each other's face. When he called me, he said, brother, you forgot me. I say, I don't remember. He said, you remember one day, he said so and so. I just came back from the Hajj. Allah make it easy for him. He got the niyyah. Now if I put $100 a week or $20 or $30, no, I encourage, oh, now it's 100 No, no, I want to make it 200 I want to make it 300 I want to make it 400 You're going to add some more and more and more because now your attention, you want to go to the hajj. So you put more because you want to speed up the processing, but you start, it's very hard. When you start, it's really difficult. But when you see the action, you will encourage yourself to do more and more. So before the month of Ramadan, I say one ayah. After one week, trust me, you're going to read a whole page. Two weeks after, it's going to be three pages. Now you are interested to finish the Quran and you are happy. That's how it starts. When you start your business, you're not going to gain money right away. It takes a time. So when you start something, continue doing it. Wallahi, from now on, you can finish the whole Qur'an more than four or five times. If you start it from today, and you make it as a sadaqah for yourself, and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, I'm doing that because I need you, Allah, to meet me with clear from all the sins. As a sadaqah, I'm starting from now, Ya Allah. Allah will accept it from you. Allah will love you so much. Do it, brothers and sisters. Start to change your life to the better life. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I say that today to remind myself and all of you that our time in this dunya is limited. A few days ago, I received a phone call from one of the beautiful brother. He's from Yemen. His father is in a hospital today in Manhattan. They put him in the machine. 
And he's asking me to make dua for him. And I ask everyone to make dua for him, inshallah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him a speedy recovery. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take his life, take him the right way. By la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. I remember this man, 1990, when I got lost for some hell. And everyone got difficult in his life. I'm not perfect, you're not perfect. I have difficulty in my life. And I give up completely. And I was so upset. And as we remind each other, don't think about the death. At this time, I made a mistake too. I said, I wish I die because I cannot see my family need the food and I don't have anything. No one perfect. And I meet this man. And he called me, you're Egyptian. I said, yes. He said, why you look sad like that? I say, well, things going wrong around. He say, yeah, Sheikh, by the uh, Yemeni language, Ittaqillah, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did you dua, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I say, day and night. He say, okay, go home, relax, get shower, pray, and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is my number, contact with me. For somehow, he opened a lot of connection for me. By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today I say this man changed my life completely to a better life. He let me go back to study, to be in the place which, where I am right now. This man, by small words, he gave it to me, he changed my family life. Today I owe him a lot. All I can do for him is the dua and I ask all of you to make dua for him. So beautiful word, my brothers and sisters, can it change anyone's life? I'm talking about myself now as a working in a professional field. The one who put me in this space, this man by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's a regular man. When I meet him any time, I hug him and I kiss his hand. He says, stop. I say, I cannot forget that we changed my life. I cannot forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put you in front of my eyes at these days, 1990. Today, he's in a coma. I am the most person who said, but there's nothing bigger than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is controlling everything. And he put all of us to meet each other somehow, to help each other. I don't hesitate to help anyone, and I need help from everyone. All I need from all of you, the dua for him, and dua for me, and I make dua for all of you, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our all good deeds. And I remind you, the good deeds is not money. The good deeds is how we meet each other, how we talk to each other, how we help each other. I'm telling you, small world can change everyone's life. If I see my son or your son in the loose, and I get him on the side and I talk to him, I can change his life for a better life by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't need to ignore it. I don't need to ignore that. If somebody asks me to help his son, I cannot say, no, I don't have time. No, you have time. Because you change a person from a place he said to a place he is going to a better things. And again, don't push your kids for studying. Leave them alone. They can be better in somewhere else than studying. They can be the perfect in another place. Don't push them and so many brothers, as I see today, they push themselves and the kids to be in better places, to talk to engineer, leave them alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us in different categories to help each other. As you see the animals in all different places, they help each other, they work together. Allah put every one of the animal, look at the cat and rats. And what is the benefit of a human being from that? It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to help each other by the dua. Extend our hand to each other. Get closer to each other. Don't talk bad at all. This is the time you correct your tongue. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of us to change our tongue to the better tongue, not more than dhikr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and forgive each other. Allahumma ghfir lana zunubana. Kaffir anna sayyatina. Ishfi mardana. 
اشفي مرضانا اشفي مرضانا ارحم موتانا اغفر لوالدينا ارحمهما كما ربيانا صغارا اللهم اغفر لوالدينا وارحمهما كما ربيانا صغارا اللهم اغفر لوالدينا وارحمهما كما ربيانا صغارا اللهم ابعد الشيطان عن بيوتنا وعن ابنائنا اللهم اجعلنا من حفاظ قرانك الكريم وسنه نبيك الكريم اللهم اجمعنا مع محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والصديقين والنبيين في جنات النعيم اللهم نسالك الجنه ونعيمها اللهم نسالك الجنه ونعيمها ونعوذ بك من النار وشرورها اللهم لا تجعلنا من اهل النار اللهم اجعلنا في جنات النعيم اللهم ابني لنا قصرا في جناتك اللهم اجمعنا جميعا في عليين اللهم اجمعنا جميعا في عليين اللهم اجعلنا يا ربنا من مقيم الصلاة اللهم اجعلنا يا ربنا من مقيم الصلاة ومن يؤتي الزكاة اللهم تقبلنا وانت راض عنا يا كريم اللهم اجعل آخر كلماتنا في هذه الدنيا لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله اللهم لا تقبض أرواحنا إلا وانت راض عنا يا كريم اللهم لا تقبض أرواحنا إلا وانت راض عنا يا كريم اللهم لا تقبض أرواحنا إلا وانت راض عنا يا كريم اللهم يا رحمة يا رحيم يا غفار الذنوب اغفر لنا ذنوبنا اللهم اجعل هذه اللحظة أسعد لحظاتنا يا ربنا وأنت تتوب علينا اللهم تب علينا اللهم تب علينا اللهم تب علينا اللهم إنا نلجأ إليك فلا تردنا خائبين يا ربنا نرفع إليك أيدينا أن تغفر لنا الذنوب فاغفر لنا يا الله اللهم لا تجعل هذه الساعة تمر إلا وأنت غافر لوالدينا اللهم اغفر لهم ولكل أموات المسلمين اللهم آمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله رحمني ورحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وأنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العلي العظيم يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم وأقم الصلاة